This baby is malnourished, but there is plenty of food in the nearby town. This woman is hemorrhaging after losing her baby, but the local hospital wouldn't treat her. This woman has an undiagnosed illness, but can't afford to pay the bribes needed to get to a doctor. These are the stories of the Rohingya of Western Myanmar. About 130,000 are prisoners in refugee camps in their own homeland. There are people here who need to see medical professionals and who are unable to do that because of policy that uh, essentially deprives them of access to health care. When you confine a group of people to displacement camps and then you deprive them of basic needs for survival, it has a destructive impact. The conditions here are deplorable, but perhaps much like other refugee camps around the world, the difference here is that these conditions are avoidable and the result of government policy. In 2012, violence erupted in this region of Myanmar, forcing the Rohingya to flee to camps. Their homes were burnt and bulldozed. While they were born and brought up here, the government considers the Rohingya illegal immigrants from neighboring Bangladesh. Myanmar's president, the former general Tian Sen, has said that those who can't produce documents proving their ancestors lived here more than 60 years ago should be placed in camps or sent abroad. For most, it's an impossible task. It was a time when few had any papers. Such a policy has led to accusations that the government is trying to destroy the Rohingya as a people. These acts would lead to a slow death of the victims, and that's where the destruction whole or in part comes from. Over the last eight months, a clinic at Yale Law School has been analyzing recent events in Myanmar in the context of the legal definition of genocide. In order to establish guilt, a court would need to prove that government officials have shown a deliberate intent to destroy the Rohingya. We think we have strong evidence to believe that genocide is occurring. Given the scale of atrocities being committed and the way that people and politicians talk about Rohingya, we think it's hard to avoid a conclusion that intent is present. As the first contested elections in a quarter of a century approach, Aung San Suu Kyi, the icon of Myanmar's democracy, has ignored the plight of the Rohingya. Like many world leaders, they prefer to engage with former military rulers rather than stand up for the rights of a powerless people. Phil Reese, Al Jazeera, Western Myanmar.